action figure fans, it's the one and only Opto Bottom is finished with another video review. And on today's episode, we have the Prime One Studios exclusive and ultimate edition of the Transformers Age of Extinction Optimus Prime. Now I've been fortunate to have taken a look at other Prime One pieces in the past, and every single time I am beyond blown away. While yes, these are expensive collectibles, I've said it before and I will say it again, to a Transformer fan, these are works of art. Now starting off first with the packaging, as you can see there's actually two boxes here, but what I really like is you can put them together and kind of create a almost full display in of itself. You got one half of Optimus's head, you got the other half, you put them together, you get the full head. Now both of these boxes are a slightly different size. You come around, you can see that that artwork carries on. You got his sword right there. You come around to the back of the box here and you got various warnings, precautionary sort of things. The different logos such as Transformers, Hasbro, uh, Paramount, DreamWorks, and then Prime One Studios. Obviously you got a big Autobot logo there as well. Uh, they are both different sizes. I, I'm probably going to get in the camera a little bit, but again, very, very big. And then you can see Optimus's face continues on here. And then on this one here, you have the same type of stuff, but slightly different looking with the Autobot logo with the little flames there. As I said, both of these boxes, as you can see, are different sizes. One houses just the base for the figure, while the other one has all the uh, different parts to put the piece together. But as you can see, I mean, these are huge, uh, just in and of themselves. But uh, for the packaging on these, uh, like I said, absolutely massive. Uh, I'm getting, I know I'm getting in the way, but these are really huge, huge pieces. And as I said, this is the ultimate edition, but it's also specifically the exclusive version. So I'm gonna be showing you everything here. But for the packaging on this, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get this out here and see how cool it actually is. Now starting off first with the base, as I said, this is entirely packaged separately from the rest of the figure because this is massive but has a tremendous amount of detail on here nonetheless. You can see gorgeous paint variation with some blue, you got some green with moss, a lot of different grays and blacks throughout the entire thing. Just really a gorgeous overall piece just in of itself. I mean the sculpting and paintwork on here blows me away. And while it wasn't the first thing that I took out of the package to play with, it really was kind of you know, breathtaking when I finally got to it. I was, you know, putting together the statue and everything and that impressed me and then I got to this and it, it took it to a whole nother level. Now it also comes with this really nice Autobot logo sort of plaque thing in here. You can see gorgeous red color. Look at the back, absolute gorgeous paint on there. Very reflective. You got a nice, almost gunmetal gray for the Autobot logo itself, but really gorgeous in of itself. And then you've got a little section right here in the front that this just magnetically goes into and kind of completes that look. And then coming to take a closer look here at the top again, amazing detail. You see all these different wires Throughout it, again, you've got the little green moss bits thrown throughout. Taking a look at the top section here, again, you've got like moss kind of crammed in there. Gorgeous gold and bronze coloring on this section. I love how it's also damaged. You can see some like rips here with wires underneath. This almost looks like it's meant to resemble the uh, spaceship that Lockdown had. That's my guess. Again, you got some nice damage right down here taking a look at the rest again the color variation with the wires I mean that's all sculpted in this is polystone so very heavy duty and great attention to detail that's something that polystone really does afford you the ability to do sculpt in a tremendous amount of detail more uh, torn up marks right there this right here well you spin it all the way around and again like I said this is the front of it and this is the base that you're going to put uh, Optimus's right foot into to stabilize it here on the base. Now you don't necessarily need to do that. I'll show that here in a bit. Optimus does have pads on the bottom of his feet which allow you to not necessarily use this. This does as you can see take up a lot of space. I mean here's my hand. I mean it's very very large. I also want to show the bottom here if I can carefully do it here and then when you come around to take a look at the bottom again 
Primus Studios, you got that nice portrait of Optimus right there. Transformers Age of Extinction, Ultimate Edition. But then this is where you see that it is a little bit different. This is number 713 out of 888 of the exclusive versions. So this is more limited than just the regular Ultimate Edition. And you get a few extra accessories to go along with it, which I'll show off here in a bit. And then again, much like I was talking about with the bottom of Optimus's feet, the base itself has some heavy duty foam pieces on here to elevate this off of the surface so that nothing gets damaged on the bottom here. And here we have them. Now, in addition to everything that you get here, you do get the instruction sheet, which is very important to make sure that you go through. It shows all the parts, the display, the different accessories that uh, this guy comes with, in addition to the uh, exclusive accessories, that being the seed, uh, the display, and then the energy sword. And then it shows how to attach it, some images, how to create different looks for them. And as you can see, it is fairly extensive in terms of how to put it together. Now, most of the small little parts I've already put on the various uh, body parts and stuff. So all we're gonna have to do is assemble kind of the main components. But as you can see, the Ultimate Edition allows you to really create, now flip that around, really create a lot of different looks. For example, you can have him holding his swords with one type of arm. Another look where his arms look a little bit different, but just standing there, another look with this, uh, his shield on the back. Another look with him holding his sword in the opposite hand and having his shield on his other arm. And then another image of him just kind of standing there holding his big giant cannon. This kind of replicates how Optimus looked at the different stages of Age of Extinction. Like this is basically a standard look for him. And then when he pulled out the sword, his arms like morphed into a bigger, bulkier look and you can create that look as well. Uh, with the exclusive accessories, uh, come around back around, uh, you can also do that look with an Energon sword coming out of one of his arms. So lots of different display options for this that allows you to create what you want basically. Now in terms of the design for the Age of Extinction and even the last night version of Optimus, it's not my favorite. I did like the original look for him in the earlier films, but that being said, Prime One Studio has done, again, an absolute amazing job putting the detail in recreating how Optimus looked in this film. Starting off first, I'm gonna kinda angle up because I know that my camera's gonna want to uh, adjust the focus. Let's take a closer look at uh, his leg. This is the one that will uh, attach to the base. Gorgeous detail, again, let me zoom in. Uh, I don't have a cameraman anymore, so I do apologize, but Gorgeous detail. You can see layers and layers upon detail with the paint and everything on the inside there. Uh, it's spectacular. It really very nicely comes through. I love the very nice glossy paint that they used on the parts that would probably be vehicle parts. I mean, obviously you got the little flame detail on there. Now, like I said, uh, certain parts had to be attached. They're all magnetic, so all you do is just put it on there and it stays on there very nicely. It is a little bit tricky uh, to read where some of these uh, parts are coming from, uh, like this one. I, I, I think I had a real hard time with that one there. I don't remember exactly. And then, like I said, you got these pieces and everything here, but terrific detail. Uh, great kind of paint wash on the uh, the feet. That looks amazing. You see the, uh, the parts of the thigh here have that same kind of uh, paint detail. It's not metal, like I said, it's polystone, but the paint detail is exemplary. You can see some nice kind of wear and scratches and stuff on the uh, the paint itself. Just really gorgeous and you can kind of even see some Cybertronian writing right there which I never noticed in the movie but it's there. And now as I said this leg here is the one that's designed to uh, plug in to the base itself. So again just coming around taking a look at all the detail. You come to the bottom that's that big giant opening for that kind of post that goes in there. But as I said, he does have these little rubber pieces on the bottom here that allow you, if you wanted to not use it with that base, you don't have to. It won't you know, rub on the bottom or damage it or anything, but just, again, gorgeous, gorgeous detail. Even the wires here, one thing that's nice is these wires are actually kind of movable. Uh, I mean, you're not supposed to move them, but it, it just adds a layer of detail to it, which does really look just simply spectacular. Coming around to take a look at the opposite leg again, basically the same thing. Uh, you do have the parts that you do have to 
attached to it. Really not that big of a deal, but again, great detail, nice paint strokes on the feet, which look amazing, uh, gorgeous detail with the, the reds and the blues. Uh, as I said, it has a really nice glossy look to it and really does pop. I mean, that is stellar. I mean, again, layers and layers of detail in there with the paint and the sculpting. Uh, you can even look at the back of the leg here. I mean, he's got like pistons sculpted in there. I mean, that is really quite, quite impressive. Now coming in to take a look at his torso, uh, this is one of the he heaviest pieces on him because it's just a big giant chunk of the uh, polystone. But again, uh, amazing amount of sculpted detail in this. I want to come in a little bit closer. You can see really nice Autobot logo on the inside there. Again, really gorgeous layering with the paint and sculpted detail. And you got these little pieces right here that do replicate parts of his uh, truck. You have that nice chrome look right on there. It actually does have the Western Star logo right there, which is quite impressive. Again, great detail down in uh, the torso area with some hoses and such. Come around here to the back and you can see that uh, you get a little bit more car stuff, or I should not say car, but truck stuff. Uh, these little pieces do have to be attached. This also has to be attached. It just kind of pegs in right in there and then you give it a nice little push to really sturdily secure it. Put that in there. Again, some more magnetic pieces that lock things in. Again, you got another little one right there that just plops right in there. Great detail with like the spine. And then again, uh, just amazing. I I'm blown away by the sculpting work on this and the amount of detail and paint that they're really able to get in there. I mean, that's so amazing. I, I honestly would love to sit down and watch them do this and, and, and paint it to make it look as good as it does. I feel like I would be absolutely entertained by it. Uh, you can see like these top sections here have a really nice amount of wear and scratch work, which looks spectacular. I uh, absolutely love that. Again, they're able to make it look like metal and it's all just because of the painting. Now, in terms of the assembly of it, let me kind of move some of this stuff off to the side because I got a lot of stuff to get here and I have to do a have to start a some oh one other thing that i'd want to talk about you come around here to the back this is this big giant hole right here can be filled in by this piece uh that magnetically goes in there and fills in that little gap or is that upside down maybe, oh, well, i'm throwing it uh, maybe it's no yeah that's it's it's supposed to go oh well maybe Okay, yeah, just like that. Uh, that fills in the hole where the sword, the shield normally would go. So when you take this out, you have that peg hole there. But if you don't want to put that in there, uh, and by that I mean like put the uh, the shield on his back for display option, that covers it. And again, I mean, look at that. Look at that paint detail on there. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So coming back, no, no, or, or I'm going to come in, zoom in, I should say. Let's see get things centered a little bit. And I'm going to start assembling this guy some. So again, you got a very heavy duty post right here, which is magnetic. You bring this up first, kind of lock that in. Now, this is the leg that, again, you want to put into the base. So you want to do this first and then bring this in and kind of position it. And then let's, where's the other leg? Here we go. Got the other leg. If you guys saw my live stream of this, you can imagine how difficult this was for me to actually put together. So that again, you bring this in, put that post in like that, just kind of squeeze it in there. And there we go. And I'm gonna just kind of set this off to the back for right now, but you're seeing how massive he gets. Uh, he also does have these little pieces that will go in the very front. You just, again, magnetically attach them. Is there, or do they go like that? No, I think they go like that. Yeah, you just put them in there and it's magnetic. So they lock in there really very nicely and very easily, I might add. Now, first of all, I'm gonna go with just kind of his standard look. So that's gonna be these arms right here. A little bit different, as you can see, uh, they're a lot slender. This is a lot more bulky and more armored up, as you can see. This just is kind of like his standard arm, but again, great, great detail on there. You can see that flame detailing, really nice detail with the paint and the sculpt work throughout the whole thing. This piece right here, 
removes, as you can see, that fills in very nicely, which I like, and then you can remove that, and that's where you'll be able to put like his uh, shield when you have it on his arm or something. And then uh, the hands, all are magnetically attached just like so, so that you'll be able to easily swap those out if you want to. For example, if you take the big giant gun and put that in there like that, that is all easy. Then to remove this, you just slide that out just like so. You can swap it out with other arms or hands as well. So we have um, this, let me come around here. He's got uh, a hand here that is holding his sword that again puts in there. Doesn't really match nearly as well. I mean, that you can see that the design of this hand is much different than this one. But, you know, you, you can play around with it if, if you really want to. But we're just going to go, like I said, with a standard kind of look. So you put that in there like that. Oh, zoom back. And we're just going to come up here. And then again, it's magnetic. So you just kind of feed it in. It is a little tight, uh, but you get it in there just like so. Looks really very nice. Let me kind of angle up so you can see the uh, the progress as I'm building them. And then he does have his shoulder pieces right here, which these were also difficult for me to figure out how to attach them because, again, they are magnetic. You have a piece right here and then a piece right there. And then on the uh, hand, well, let me, I'll show it on this here. On the uh, shoulder here, you've got a little hole that you'll just take that and you'll put that in there. This can kind of be positioned kind of however you want, uh, but let's see, just put that in there like that. And then you can just kind of flex that around, create that look. Going with the uh, other hand, that's similar. This one here, this piece does not remove like the other one did, but again, same level of great detail. This hand though is now in a fist, whereas you can see that's also a fist, but if you wanted to, you can swap out for this hand, which is just a relaxed hand, pull that out. You can put that in there again. It's magnetic, so it stays in there very nicely, but this is just an open palm. But again, you can see that you have a slightly different look to it, whereas this one has these nice ribs going across the backside. This one obviously doesn't. So again, personal preference, really how you want to set up your display and how you want to create that look. Also, in addition to that, let's see, pull this over here, and you have this hand here, which is in that same kind of pattern, but as you can see, he's holding the base of the sword. So what you can do, because you can have him either hold his sword in this hand, or this section slides out. You just got a little post right there that comes together and locks down like that. Well, let's see, maybe it goes like that. There we go. So you can do that if you really want to, or you can pull that out and you can take this and slot it down. Let's see, again, maybe not, there we go. Slot it down like that. So he'll be able to hold the sword in this arm. Again, we get probably my head's in the way. So you just feed that in like that. And you can have him hold the sword in that hand if you really want to as well. Take the little shoulder piece. We're gonna put that right up there like that. Again, you don't need to do that if you don't want to. It's a display option that you can, or that you have afforded to you. So taking that out, just gonna put that in there because again, we're just going with the standard kind of look form. And then you do get, and now I'm, as I'm showing you the different arms and the weapons and things of that nature, uh, I can also show you his exclusive energy axe. You can take that out, put that in just like so. Again, it's just magnetic, so it locks in there fairly easily. And I want to see, you could probably do it in either hand. So let's put that. Yeah, so it can go in either hand. Again, different display options for you, or you don't have to do any of that at all. And just keep it like so. Now, he also does come with two different heads. Uh, one is with the, uh, the battle mask, one is without. So taking a look first, at the standard head, I zoom in to take a look at that. Again, great, great detail on there. Just really quite stunning. Uh, all the way around, great paint on it. You can see very nice glossy paint there still. Coming on the side, you see a little bit of gold on his ears. You can see a little Cybertronian writing that he has on there, which again, very, very accurate. Now this does 
actually light up. You come to the back, it does include the batteries, and then you just insert the batteries into uh, this top section here. Let's see. This whole base here just kind of hangs out. All the camera is focusing on his leg. But uh, taking a look at this, great detail again here. Replicates very nicely the upper chest area of him, so it does look really very cool. It's just a bust, but you got the nice Autobot logo right there. And then taking a look at the head again, Closer on the back side here, uh, you just remove this piece, you insert the batteries, put that back on there, all magnetic. The button is this piece right here, and you turn that on, and gorgeous, gorgeous blue light eyes. I mean, that is piercing. I love it. I mean, it focus. And it's not going to focus on it, but that really is uh, stellar. Let me see if I can zoom in. I want to get as close as no, a little bit too close, but I mean amazing detail all throughout the entire piece and like I said those eyes are amazing. I do kind of wish that there was some way they could implement uh, some electronics where it would stay lit up all the time like plugging it in or something. I think that that would be amazing and then he does come with the alternate head which uh, as you can see for the most part is the exact same let me turn these batteries off uh, basically the exact same in terms of the overall look but obviously this one here has the mouth guard and then again same thing with the eyes so you can have two heads two heads are better than one that's what they say but looking at the detail on this again coming in i just oh coming in uh it's so hard when you don't have a camera person I mean, that is amazing. Uh, just, wow. I love the detail that they get into this all the way through. I mean, you can see gorgeous paint strokes in there. Just absolute gorgeous level of detail that they got in here. It, it, it doesn't get any better than this in terms of detail. Uh, now, I'm going to put in just the regular head. And then again, that's just magnetic, puts in right there. Now the thing that's nice about it is the post is actually fully rounded on the bottom, which means you can rotate his head. Uh, it, it doesn't hinder it or lock into place or anything. So if you wanna have him kind of tilted one way, you could do it and have him looking towards you. I, I really like that. Very subtle, but really very cool. And this is it, this is the, uh, the standard configuration form uh, no weapons no armory like a shield or anything like that just the standard optimus standing there looking amazing and then of course as i was saying you can swap out that lock uh, go ahead take this off we're going to remove this kind of give it a little wiggle and pull at the same time don't pull too hard because you don't want to damage it but uh, just kind of do a little wiggle it'll slowly come out just take your time you paid a lot of money for this take your time with it so pull that all the way out just like that and we're gonna replace this arm with this one now again I mean you can feel a heft to it this has a similar look but is a lot more bulky I mean you can see how big his forearms get how big his biceps get uh, I mean it changes slightly and it, it's just him armored up that really is uh, about it. So we're gonna take this, we're going to zoom back out. We're gonna have to take the shoulder piece and then again, the shoulder piece just locks in just like that, kind of move that around like that just to get it off to the side a little bit more. We're gonna give him a sword. So let's bring in this hand, which matches with that armory a little bit better. And then again, you can see how uh, in terms of the paint detail, like the flame work, you can kind of match that up and you can see kind of matches a little bit better when it goes from the hand to the forearm, which I think looks really cool. And again, you're just gonna take this, we're gonna put that in there and lock that into place like that. Take this sword, we're going to pull this away. And then again, taking a look at the detail on the sword, uh, I mean, spectacular on this as well if, if it'll focus on that there we go you can see some nice I mean this is huge too but you can see some really nice Cybertronian work on that entire thing looking fantastic and then you look at the arm guard area great paint on that 
as well. So coming back and then you can take this, you just wedge that in there. And now this does get a little bit heavy and has a tendency to make it fall. So just kind of straighten it a little bit. And that's kind of what you're going to want to do. You can find a little happy place where it doesn't fall down, but you can see it does have some weight to it. And you can see just how big it is. Now we can take the other arm. We can detach this, pull that away just like so, get my head in the way. And then again, we have this arm that if you want to have it with him just holding a fist, you can, or you can remove the fist. You can put that hand in there and put that in, put the shoulder piece right there. And I mean, how awesome does that look? I mean, really, that is just by itself a really cool look. Now, while you have it like this, if you really want it, now I'm gonna, this is gonna be tricky to, to do and show because uh, it's very heavy, but I'm gonna take this off because I'm gonna have to lift this whole guy up. What you can do, come around. If you're gonna pick him up, I would recommend kind of doing it by like the knees. Those are pieces that are permanently attached and then you kind of hold by the crotch and rotate all the way around just like so. Now this is the part here that I was talking about. You can attach the shield. Again, amazing detail on this as well. Uh, gorgeous paint, nice wear, the Cybertronian as well. You can take this piece here, take this out of the back. It's magnetic as well. And then you just take this and you fit that in there. Make sure, there we go. Just like that. And you can create that look for them. And then again, personal preference, but I think that looks pretty darn cool. Now, unfortunately, there is no place where you can store the uh, sword in the back. That's just one of the display options that's not put into it, but there's a ton of other ones, so I'm kind of over that. So again, I'm gonna bring this all the way around, careful as you do it, and then again, that creates that look. Come around with this, you can put the sword back in his hand, back on his arm, and that again creates a very cool cool look for him. Or maybe you don't want to have the shield on there. So what you can do for that, we're going to remove this. We're going to take this piece off, set that off to the side, and again, remove the arm slowly, set that there, bring in this arm, take this piece right here, take this piece out, put that arm back in, this, these arms are a little bit tighter, so be careful when you're doing that. Then take this and put that right back. Take out the shield and then come around here and you can now take the shield and it will attach via there. You can then, if you wanted to, take this arm, pull this arm here, put that back in, remove this fist, take this fist that has the uh, handle on it, put that there, let's put that shoulder piece back on like that, separate the sword just like so, and then you can attach the sword. So let me get this in here, push that in, and now you have kind of a full on, well hey, we're going full on armor, let's take that head off, Let's put this head with the battle mask on and, oop, and boom. Got the eyes on, got them all revved up, ready to go. I mean, this is really quite gorgeous how this looks. Uh, I don't have it on my turntable, which kind of stinks. But again, you can take this, kind of just position it like that. Sword, turn the head a little. I mean, how awesome does that? Just look at how gorgeous that is. I mean, wow. You know, and again, I, I mean, one other option for you is to take this off. We'll go ahead and put this little piece back in. And let's take this off like that. You can take the fist, put that fist in there, 
you can take this giant gun, pull this piece out. Again, just take this whole thing. You got, you can see you got a little metal post right there that helps to lock it in and guide it. So just be careful when you're doing it. There you go. And then just fit that in there. I mean, and now you have him holding kind of a, a little bit more, I don't want to say iconic of a weapon, but a, a weapon that he used a little bit more, his big giant gun. I mean, it's all uh, personal preference on what you want to do and how you want to display your piece. Uh, so many, so many different options. Now, one final accessory that I want to talk about. Uh, as I said, this is the exclusive version, so you do get the Energon Axe. The other exclusive accessory that you get, if you get it um, through various uh, online retailers and stuff, is a seed. Now, this is really cool just by itself. I mean, you can see gorgeous display base on there. Really nice, kind of bronze color and such. Really looking very, very neat. You got the little hole right there. And then the seed itself, again, has a very nice paint wash on there. Very simple, but looks, again, very realistic. You got some Cybertronian on there, and then you have a little metal post right here that you can put, and you got a little felt thing on the bottom. Put that right there, and now you have the seed, which can display very nicely with Optimus. Kind of wish there was a way that you could have him hold this. That would be kind of cool, but did he actually hold it? I don't think he actually held it in the movie. So this and this will increase the price, but I, I really do think it's worth it. If you're paying that money in anyhow for this, get the exclusive version because it's always better to have more display options with this than not. But there he is. Optimus Prime, uh, I mean, it, it really does kind of say that there's uh, four kind of configurations. If you have the, the different accessories like the Energon, it's basically five, but you can really change things up and create your own look for it. And you can mix and match and do different things. So like, you can take this off. Let's take this. You can put, wedge that in. Hey, maybe you can take that. You can put that on there if you want. I mean, again, that's two different kind of configurations combined into one. And then take that, you can have him hold the sword. You know, I mean, again, different options, which is amazing. Having all these different accessories to kind of customize it really does make this an even more enjoyable piece. But there he is, guys, the Ultimate Edition exclusive version of the Age of Extinction Optimus Prime. Uh, again, uh, just to reiterate, this is, without, without a doubt, a beautiful work of art. It, it is one of the most impressive pieces that I have in my collection. And while when I took a look at the Dark of the Moon Optimus, there's a lot more small little minute parts into it. The design on this guy has changed considerably where he's a lot more streamlined. And that's just one of the aspects of the new design that I'm not a big fan of. I, I don't look at this and other than a few parts, I don't see a truck in him. It's like, where's the tires? There's no tires on him. I don't see any tires anywhere. I mean, he's got smokestacks, but where's the tires on this guy? You look at that original version, and that is all over the place. I mean, you can totally see that he transforms into a truck. But Prime One Studios has still taken the design from the movie and replicated it beautifully. And I think because there are so many different options in terms of a display with this guy, that's where the price is still roughly the same. At $2,000, this is actually a little bit cheaper than, than that original Dark of the Moon Optimus that I took a look at years ago. And I think that is because of all the different display options. You do get a lot more in terms of extra hands, extra weapons, extra arms, all of that stuff is included in this, whereas that Dark of the Moon one really didn't have a lot of that. So I feel like what Prime One did, because of the you know, less detail that the actual CGI has, making it easier, I guess, for them to recreate the entire piece, they included all this extra stuff, which I think is fantastic. 
As I said, if you get the exclusive version, there's basically five sort of display options. And then from that, you can kind of mix and match and create other ones. And I really am blown away by that. Oh, and here's Tux. So he wants to hang out. This would not be a kitchen table video review if a cat of mine did not show. What are you gonna do? Are oh, you just gonna sit there? Okay, just sit there though, Tuxie. Okay. <laughs> get, get out to us. Get out to us. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, honestly, guys, if you're a Transformer fan, this is a work of art. It's a piece that is without a doubt is going to stand out in your collection. All of these Prime 1 pieces are centerpieces and shine. Now, in terms of availability, uh, I do believe that Sideshow Collectibles is the exclusive distributor of these here in North America. I think you could get them from like Big Bad Toy Store and things of that nature, but your best bet is probably to go through Sideshow. And I think that they have a couple pieces remaining. So if you have the funds, absolutely, this is a piece that I would recommend having. It really is amazing. So all that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate your support and letting me know by hitting that thumbs up button. It actually does go a long way towards helping me out and I would really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, welcome. And before you go, make sure you subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you already subscribed, now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you are getting those email notifications. We all know just how unreliable that YouTube subscription box is, and the best way to help support my channel and not miss any future reviews of mine is to click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And a very special thanks to you if you made it all the way to the end of this review. Another way that you can really help support my channel is making sure that you watch a video all the way through. And if you did that, thank you. Also, a huge shout out to all of my patrons who through their continued support helps to make reviews like this possible. And finally, remember, the real trouble with the world is too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.